J'adore les parcours, c'est spoiler. Oh, oh. Wow! Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> saucy. Google Translate. Oh, oh. This is spoiler. Hey, six years of French <laughs> and Google Translate. Bear with me tonight. Uh, this is um, Brett. He's hosting the episode tonight. Um, he's picking the 2004 B-movie <laughs> classic. District B-13. Classic. Um, yeah, I was kind of a left, out of the uh, left field pick, and uh, I was kind of regretting it all week, and then I watched it, and then I stopped regretting it, because it's whatever. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, so, uh, is French. It's a French movie. Uh, I believe so, it's, Pappy, the second French movie Spoilers is done? Ooh. I think the second, yeah. We did Breathless, Breathless way yeah. back in the day. Uh, way raw. back in the day. Is that... In- uh, French. Oh yeah, and raw. Ah. So at least two. Raw. Let me double check. All right. So while he's checking, uh, we're gonna go around the table here, and let's go. Since Pappy's busy, we're gonna go east to east. Uh, introduce yourself, and I don't know. Either tell me your f- a favorite international movie of yours, or one you've seen lately that you think everyone should see. Not non English movie. Non English movie. Mm. That's a foreign tough language, if you will. Ooh. Is Parasite off limits? No, you could say you could talk about that. Who goes first? Josh. Oh, I East do go East first. Probably. Um, this is Josh from Goshen, just a little east, maybe, of Mikey and Steve. E. Uh. Hey, I just wanted to get this out there. The two leads in this movie look like. Chris Martin from Coldplay and Ted Mosby from Mosby, one hundred percent. Ah, yeah, you stole my only note. <laughs> so I want to talk about that all night. Is Happy that a good list. or bad thing, Josh? Oh, I awesome. love it because I'm just going to call him Chris Martin and Ted this whole time <laughs> in the pod, and I, I want to get that out there. But as far as like foreign movie, one that I've been flirting with picking, but it's almost like too serious for uh, spoilers podcast is City of God from two thousand two. Um, yeah. It's mostly in Portuguese. It's a really good movie, but it's really intense. It's on my scratch off list, and it's I heard it's like kind of a tough watch, but I heard it's really good. Yeah, you'll feel different for a few days. Yeah. Hmm. So I guess we'll go to uh, Stevie. I guess according to Josh, you're a little more westist. I guess. Let's see here. Hey, this is Stevie recording from Elkhart, Indiana. You could pick a Mizugaki if you want. No, uh, one I watched about a month ago. I love this movie. I watched it a lot. Uh, have you guys ever seen House of Flying Daggers? No, I don't think I have. Mm-mm. Great kung fu mm. movie. Everybody should watch it. It's very much in the light of um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Very much in the vein of that. But, Brad, I have a question for you. Yeah. If you were a casting director and you were making the American version of this movie, who would be your Chris Martin and Ted Mosby? <laughs> it's funny that you ask that. Because my little surprise for you was they did make an American version. And You're the casting this... director, Brett. Yeah, uh, and I picked these guys. It's got Paul Walker and the same guy <gasps> who does uh, the parkour, the dark Ted Mosby. What? And, and Riz as the bad guy. Like, I really want to watch this movie. Ooh. What's it called? It's not Running Scared, Brick, is District it? District B-14. Brick House or uh, Brick Castle or something? District C-13. That's a good question. Um, Brick Mansions is what it's called. I don't know, Pap. I don't know, Stevie. Uh, Tom Hardy and... uh, He's just picking his boys. Shia LaBeouf? I don't know. Why would you throw this to (laughs) Brett? He's going to give you six different answers and stick to his boys. (laughs) Tom. I'd probably pick... uh, uh, What's the guy from Fast and Furious? Vin Diesel. The Rock. Vin Diesel. You just yeah. go with the whole family. Neither of the and none of those people can move the way these two guys no. can. <laughs> oh, great picks, nonetheless. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's a good pick. Uh, I guess let's go to Mikey. Uh, yeah, this is Mikey recording from Goshen, Indiana. The only connection I had uh, with this movie uh, is when you showed us the trailer, Brett, and I think it said, like, from the producers of Ong Bak, and I remember that being a pretty decent 
uh, kung fu action. Is that with Tony Shaw? I don't. I can't remember. I think he's like protecting an elephant or something the whole movie, and he's like flying around, kneeing people in the face. Yeah, it's with Tony uh, Shaw. It's a great movie. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool uh, action fighting sequences in that. That's like the only thing I can remember about it, and the elephant. But uh, I like that as a foreign movie. That would be my choice. The producers of this movie wrote The Fifth Element, The Professional, Lucy, La Femme Nikita. Like, he's a pretty legit writer. A couple bombs on there, too. Not B-13. Do you really think the American version could be as good as this? I mean... No. no. We'll get into it, but... <laughs> but it could be fun to watch. Yeah, I just... Part of the charm <laughs> is that you can't tell... You can't tell how bad the acting is, really, because it's all in French. So it's kind of, like, hidden. True. Brushed away a little bit. Well... It- <laughs> You have to imagine it's already limited by having one Ted Mosby flying around, jump kicking everyone in the face, and then Paul Walker being like, yeah, bro. <laughs> Just, Sick, what is bro. he doing? <laughs> All right. Uh, Pappy? Yeah, this is Pappy. We're going from Louisville, Colorado. I was able to confirm this is only our third French movie we've done, and I totally missed what your question was, Brett, while I was looking that up. It was... Uh- either your favorite foreign language film or like one that you think people should see or one that sticks out to you that you've watched. Yeah. I, I hope we bring back the Miyazaki movies uh, this summer. Those were always fun. Uh, check out those episodes. Uh, my favorite from that studio is actually grave of the fireflies though. It's really sad, uh, but really good. And then uh, for a live action one, I'll go stalker, which is a Russian movie. I watched that about, a year ago and i think it like became one of my favorite movies ever like it's just it, it wouldn't it would be a terrible spoilers movie i'll never pick it for that but it's like an actual good movie if that makes sense yeah this is brett i don't really have i didn't i did all this i didn't really have one uh, i'd say it's probably between this or i really like pan's labyrinth uh ah, that's a good choice that's a movie we've spoiled that's episode 100 and <laughs> that's probably what i would go with so let's get in the movie uh, like I said, we did the movie District B-13. Not District 9. Not District 9. This is before District 9. And little less cat food eating. Uh, God, that grosses me out. So we start in 2010. Actually, someone argued, someone made an argument that this actually takes place in 2013. But uh, I couldn't find what he was talking about. So we're going to go with 2010. It's the future, air quotes. And they're in this really bad area called District B-13. You kind of find out that in 2010, uh, the government put a wall behind, kind of like the old ghettos in World War II in Poland and stuff like that, where they can't get out. They're stuck in there. Uh, They've kind of been abandoned by um, the government. You know, they can still run stuff, stores, get groceries. I don't know how they get food, but they're on quarantine. Okay, let's just put it out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a really timely pick, Brett. I didn't do it for that reason, but yeah, it is pretty timely. <laughs> so you start out with, uh, okay, Stevie's are, in my opinion, our resident credits guy. I thought these credits were awesome. What did you think of uh, the opening credits? It's a little corny, but I mean, I think it's cool at the same time. It kind of reminded me of, um, it kind of reminded me of a French guy watched Snatch for the first time and decided he was going <laughs> to make his own movie. That's that's a good comparison. I feel like it was very Guy Ritchie-ish, but I enjoyed yeah. them nonetheless. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a little hacky and it's a little corny. Um, it's a B-movie, it though. You got to remember it's, it's kind of yeah, like a B-movie. It kind of looked like, um, remember the movie Man on Fire? I, uh, I remember it. I haven't seen it, no. Well, the, the tint of all the credit looked exactly like a Tony Scott movie. Kind of just very rush and also had that gradient kind of gray, blue color to it. They start out with this... Guys, they're all heavily armed. There's guns everywhere. There's people out cooking sausages, the ugliest, grossest-looking sausages I've ever seen. Spicy sausages. (laughs) And meat sticks. Fast and Furious type car rolls up, and it's a guy who will become one of the main characters. His name's K2, and some of his cronies. Is that the like legal weed substance that was out for a little while? K2, Smiley Dog. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's also no idea what you're speaking about. I smoked a little K2 back in the day. <laughs> not ashamed to admit it. It didn't get you hey, high, it's legal. but you didn't feel normal. I'll put it that way. <laughs> That's what you're after, K2. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But anyway, and while this is going on, uh, you see someone up in his room, and he's uh, Josh. What's he? What's he got in his room? What's he unloading? Okay, so Ted, Mo- is it Mosby or Mosley? Mosby. 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 <laughs> One of the worst TV characters of all time. So I will fight you. Ted Mosby is in there with his shirt off in his bathroom. And at first, I think you're supposed to think he's like tugging one out, you know, on the DL. But actually, <laughs> camera pans down. I don't think that. <laughs> I didn't think that yeah, either. It was, uh, no, it wasn't there. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Well, anyway, camera pans down and actually he's tearing open these bags of what is presumably heroin or a really hard drug. And he's like... um just like pouring it down the sink and rinsing it out. And this movie's full of like ticking clocks, but this first one is like the guys are going up the stairs and the elevator is kind of binging, bing, bing. And he's like got 50 bags to do and he's only done like three or four (laughs) so far. So he just starts pouring like chemicals all over him and smashing them all around. But generally, I feel like this isn't one of his best moves, Brett. Yeah, no, but I think he's, he's not just, an entrepreneur. I'm guessing he's trying to he's trying to clean up the city. I think French Batman. I want to ask an early Stevie question, if I could. Uh, Please do. What is the backstory to him ending up with all this coke? Like, I think it's kind of hinted at maybe later. But like when I I first saw this like for the first time, not even two hours ago, and I thought like, oh, he's like some kind of superhero. He's like cleaning up the city, which doesn't seem to be true. But how do you think he ended up with those drugs? I think it's the way that, a, I mean, in my mind, uh, he befriended a neighborhood boy probably six months before this went down. I and eventually this. that neighborhood boy OD'd. And I think it broke him to the point where he had to steal all those drugs so no other neighborhood boys would OD. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that. and that's, that's my bad because to it. he brings it up later um, – a little bit later when he's uh his robin died he uh he's kidnapping the big boss guy and he the deal he wants to make is that you don't deal drugs like 500 yards around his apartment so he doesn't want it around his apartment and that fits in nicely with what you guessed stevie so i'd say it's pretty good k2 uh finds his way he gets through he kills the henchman out front and then he that's when he goes up in the elevator so yeah they're there to get uh leto and uh they drag Ted some Mosby. Ted Mosby, yeah. Ted. <laughs> uh, again, I don't know if you guys knew this or not, um, but Ted Mosby, Lido, David Bell, he like actually literally invented parkour. Really? Yes. Hmm. Is this like the guy so that played uh, Darth Maul and invented his weird lightsaber style? No, this is way more legit than that. <laughs> Why? <laughs> more legit than Darth so- Maul? No, I mean, it's a real thing. No, Darth Maul's awesome. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying this is like something that like is real life. That's Ray Park as Darth Maul. So I don't know the history of parkour. Was this like the movie that brought like parkour into the forefront or? I, I would say so. They also, they did some videos and they got kind of big. His mm-hmm. dad inspired him. I think his dad did a bunch of weird movements and he took that kind of style and made it into this and, um, uh, like military and ballet and gymnastics and stuff, and that's what he invented parkour. And um, that's cool. This is kind of like, yeah, there were I mean, there were some videos. There was like a video they passed around, but this was like the big unveiling of it, and it took off really big. I think mid mid to late two thousands was pretty big. I was kind of wondering that, like, into Josh's point too. Like, you can't really tell how good of an actor they are. I was watching this guy like do his flips and like kicking down doors and pull ups. I'm like, he's way too good of an athlete to be a good actor. He must be like a really <laughs> shitty French actor. Mm. No, they, yeah, they were both stunt people. Um, it's kind of like one of those things where they put in their their work and they meet somebody. And I mean, the movie was written for these two people. I mean, we just got to say that. You're not going to get an actor doing this stuff. These guys are running on walls and stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. they're pretty athletic. I watched a video, a quick a video, like behind the scenes, and the director basically said that 90% to like everything was all just them doing stuff. They said they're so natural at it that if you would have put wires on them, it would have been really unnatural. So, I mean, I'm sure they hurt themselves quite a bit doing it, but I actually saw a read a rumor that that thing where he went through the glass, that really tight glass on top of the door, that only that only took yeah, him yeah. two takes, which is freaking awesome. Well, wow. that brings up Brad. Like- there is just a really alluring 
clip of this movie yep. that we saw in college. Yeah. It got us on the trail of this movie as a whole. And we're almost to that sequence, aren't we? Like, it is pretty amazing. Yeah, they bust in. Uh, they bust into uh, Mosby's room, and he goes to. I mean, <laughs> like you were saying, I mean, this move, this video clip was passed around back in college when video clips weren't really passed around like this. Um, it was just really cool. We watched it a bunch of times. It was maybe the first video on the internet. <laughs> that, <laughs> and, so. that and Afro Ninja. Was this before YouTube? Chocolate, right? Yeah, I'm like. Yeah, YouTube was 2005, 2006, seven ish. So how how did you guys pass it around? Like an email? No, link? I think like uh, floppy disk, bro. Floppy disk. I don't mean it. I'm not saying that we like passed it around. It was just like big. You'd go to someone's house and be like, "Hey, have you seen this?" No, I it would. It was either like you downloaded it on Kazaa <laughs> or it was on a website or something. It would take me like five VHS. minutes to queue it up, and then I'd walk over to Brett's room and be like, "Yo, it's ready." <laughs> <laughs> are the pizza rolls ready all right let's go no but anyone who's not going to watch this movie i would uh you should look this clip up uh it's the first clip you'll see when you search this movie so uh, it's pretty cool uh mikey's the practical effects guy like oh, yeah. what do you think about this sequence uh where they're both running or uh where he's running away yeah from... he's running everyone's chasing him <clears throat> Yeah, it's uh, really awesome. Um, like you said, I mean, I think this is like the first time I've ever seen like parkour uh, being used anywhere. Because uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen this clip or maybe I've seen this movie before. But um, it's just a unique way of like getting from point A to point B uh, in the fastest way possible. Is like my main takeaway from like the philosophy of what parkour is supposed to be. But... Yeah, it's uh, he's running from rooftop to rooftop, and it's pretty um, athletic stuff that he's doing. He's uh, running on walls and stuff, and flipping over stuff, and evading bad guys. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, he's not really fighting anyone per se. He's, I don't know. I guess they don't really fight too much. I guess. Uh, it's more, yeah. yeah, it's more about the parkour, really. Um, so he's just, like, escaping, and he ends up jumping out through a window, and a, a bad guy yeah, idiot ends up jumping out uh, through the window as well. Uh, I guess he dies. He falls pretty far down, uh, way more he's than dead. that baby in Antichrist. Uh, but he is. <laughs> <laughs> Great call. Oh, thanks yeah. for bringing that up I again. do love how there's, like, a herd chasing him, and they kind of get thinned out throughout the chase but i also like the way just that starts out like it kind of goes against your expectations subverts them if you will right away like two guys are about to bash in the door and right when they're about to he bashes out of it the Kicks, other yeah. way i don't know that just kind of took me off guard and it was pretty cool to see yeah because you're kind of wondering like how is he gonna get out of this there's so many people with guns and they're about to bust the door and then all of a sudden yeah that's really cool i didn't really think about how cool that was but yeah, that's a classic where he jumps out and grabs the rope and the other guy just <laughs> follows him out there. Is that the guy in the Colts uh, jersey? <laughs> there was a giant <laughs> uh, there was a giant's jersey. Oh, okay. Why are all the bad guys wearing jerseys? <laughs> I, I look, there's, also I, a, perhaps, <laughs> there's also a poster of Ben Wallace too. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's in the uh, the bad guys like lair. I thought that was really weird. That's right. Yeah, the bad guys go back to the lair, and they're going to talk to their boss, uh, whose name is Taha, who's actually a co-writer on the script. Um, and he actually, I, I actually really like him in this. I don't know if he's a good actor or not, but I thought he played really cool psycho. They tell Taha that uh, Mosby got away, and <laughs> he's just doing, he's like scar-facing it the whole movie. He's just doing coke over and over <laughs> and over. Every time you see him, he's just snorting coke. <laughs> Is it coke? And it could be heroin. Like, I think the drugs he's cutting it's up is heroin. is heroin, but I think he's snorting coke. I don't know. It, maybe it's just because, I mean, maybe it's because you just see coke in so many movies, but 
Coke to me should be like really fine white, and I feel like it was on his desk or whatever. It was kind of was yellow. dirty brown. Yeah, this is all like B thirteen Coke. This maybe is- it's like maybe it's like what Babby said. It's like bunk cocaine. Maybe it's not. You know, they're in the bad part of Paris, so it's not the good stuff, man. Maybe it's not the fine Al Pacino stuff we're used to seeing in the tele. You know, in the movies. It's got a lot of a little concrete mix in it. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> Just cut up a little. Is he like known as the boss of beef? 13 like he's so big and rich he's basically like in charge of everyone he's bigger than I, u.s steel josh well he's got i mean he's got people on his payroll like when they go into the grocery store in a little bit they pretty much tell the armored guards we'll be right back yeah, he's got a whole army like and they walk in with guns he's got a whole then... army josh what do you think the army the navy he's got a whole <laughs> he's got a whole uh Log cabin full of jack dudes in black <laughs> tank tops ready to go for him at any time. <laughs> and a time. bunch of weapons, apparently. like And a bunch of jerseys. Oh, He's yeah. got murals of himself spray painted on his walls. Did you guys see that? I don't know if I saw that or not. Oh, mm. It's great. He's got a big red head. His like weird bald-shaped French head is like, spray painted <laughs> ginormously in the background of one of the walls in the garage. Yeah. That's right on par with what he's like. So anyway, Taha's uh, K2 has to tell Taha that uh, Mosby got away. And Taha just pulls his gun out and starts shooting people until they give him an idea. And it gets to K2 and he gets an idea. <laughs> That's a really memorable scene for me for some reason. Like, it's kind of what you always think a guy should do in the movies. Just start blowing people away. <laughs> and he just does it. <laughs> it makes him it makes him think pretty well. But yeah, um... And K2 comes up with the idea of let's kidnap Mosby's sister. Then he'll have to come out. So that's what they do. They go, they try to kidnap, I don't remember her name. Lola? Uh, That's Lola. It's my dog's name. I noticed it. Yeah, Lola. So they grab her, but. Which Brett, kind of circling back to when he starts blowing people away. I thought that was incredibly cheesy. Um, at this part of the movie, I'm like, oh, it's kind of cheesy. But it actually kind of comes full circle at the very end. It's kind of a character arc. Oh, yeah. Like, it was actually kind of good writing. I'll give this movie credit. I remember two things about this movie. I remembered the parkour scene at the beginning, and I remember the scene at the end that you're referring to with the empty gun. Yeah. So, you know, it's definitely memorable. Uh... I'm trying to think, do they actually get her out of the store, or does he? They just they get her, her back, out. Do they get her back to the lair? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah, they get her back to the lair. Can we talk about how Mosby's sister looks like she's fourteen? Like she's very small and young. How how old is she? She's very tiny. How old is she in this this actress in this movie? Let's see, uh, nineteen eighty two. So she's about twenty one or twenty two. Hmm, okay. And she's his sister. But acts like yep a weird girlfriend. Yeah, friend. Brittany thought they were a little too close. Uh, Come on, they're family. Have we not just, been watching five or six Fast weird. and the Furious to get why <laughs> yeah. he's loyal to her? Come on. Yeah, but he's um, treating her more like Letty and not his. Sister. No, these are like Sam Frodo jokes, and I won't have them. This is bullcrap. I'm Sam I'm with Josh. Frodo. This is potentially the worst district in Paris. Like he's just probably just looking out for his little sis. Yeah, I mean, no one else vibes. is gonna. There was a little bit of Cersei mm. vibes. I'm not gonna lie, a little Cersei Jamie mm. vibes. Yeah, I'm just the host agrees. The host agrees, <laughs> and that's all that matters. <laughs> all right, so uh, they have her in the lair, and the guy's like, "I want him, call him," and then he just pops through a window. Most people just jumps through a window <laughs> and grabs him, and then they have a, a Mexican standoff type. Whoa, deal. whoa, whoa! That's what it's called. Just a standoff, friend. <laughs> no. Amigo. <laughs> and he drops down through that skylight like Batman. He's parkour Batman. Yeah. Uh, I love that because you think that this plight to get his sister back right now is going to be the entire movie. And it's just like, nope, got him back. Got her back right away. We're like 12 minutes into the movie, guys. These are all the best parts. <laughs> what? I love these parts. All right, okay, it's fine. I just... All right. So I'm going to try to get through this one scene. (laughs) He has a gun to Taha, while K2 has a gun to Lola, and they're going to make a switch. 
They make a switch, and then they use Taha to get out of there. They walk through, like, what, 400 people with guns? I love and then, those set pieces through the building, and they kind of repeat themselves later. It's pretty cool. Yeah, the, there's a really weird scene with panties. Does anybody want to talk about that, or should we just breeze on through that one? It was a little uh, odd. I mean, did that character ever come back, the one that gets his, the panty shoved in his mouth? <laughs> he might be in the movie later, but I don't know. Yeah. Also, the timing is not right, lady. I mean, you got 50 guns pointed at you. Now's not the time to... Now's the time for, yeah, petty uh, petty yeah. revenge. It's a little cocky move when she'll be back in that lair in about 30 minutes, so it's not going to work out very well <laughs> yeah. for her. You need to keep as many clothes on in a grimy building like that anyway. Like, what are you doing? Keep... Just... Yeah. You got to take a yes. cab back or something, right? Like... <laughs> <laughs> So they get into uh, Brian Murphy's, O'Connor's car in Fast and Furious, and they drive away, but they end up getting to the super... They want to go talk to the superintendent. They get in there, and this is kind of like a, a setup for how this movie is and how Taha's gang is. They're the police. They have a lot of people in there, but they look outside, and they realize they're all going to die if they don't give Taha back, because they... Taha's army just has way too much firepower. So he makes a... Before he lets Taha go, he says, basically, he lets slip that they're going to blow this place up, right? That's what I was wondering, yeah. Like, the whole big spoiler twist of the movie is that uh, Paul Walker, or Chris Evans, was it Chris Martin, is being double-crossed? The Coldplay guy? Yeah, Chris Martin. Yeah. But, but they, like, give it away right here. He says, we're going to blow the whole stack off this place or something like that. Like, Maybe they thought he was being, uh, like, a, a euphemism for something. Like, they're just abandoning them. I don't know. But, yeah, it, yeah he never it's brought like it back up if again. If the police evacuate, I would consider uh, society that would blow up in a certain sense. So, I'm not the French major like Brett is, though. Is that true? Like, did you even watch this movie with subtitles, or did you just go original film? <laughs> I could speak a little, but no, that's way too fast. Brett, I have a question for you. Yeah. Did the superintendent lose his head or he just get his neck broken? <laughs> I'm going to say he got his neck broken. Oh, wait. I like to think he lost his head. I like to think he lost his head, too. Kind of bummed they didn't show it, like, in slow motion. Like, just something like that, but I just that was my question. Marie Antoinette style. Yeah, so, yeah, you're right. I, I actually kind of forgot about that. So they give Taha back. They give the sister back, and they put Mosby in jail. And the superintendent's trying to, like, apologize to him. I had to do it. I'm getting ready to retire. And then Mosby just pulls a knee from hell and cuts, <laughs> cuts off the superintendent's head. I think it's pretty obvious. Yeah, but the... <sighs> As big of a deal as that is, I feel like the biggest gut punch of this movie is right before that when they hand the sister back to K2 yeah. and Taha. And there's just like a really time, well timed, like guttural no yeah. from Ted Mosby. No. It's like better acting yeah. than. <laughs> like Ted Mosby's never <laughs> acted that well, actually. No! I'll kill you all. So that's the end of the first. Well, also, Heart. like, if the superintendent didn't die now, he was going to die later. He's a dumb superintendent. Like, why would you just tell the person who lost his sister it was either me or her? It was really, like, not a smart man. Plus, he gets Pretty really scummy. close to that cage. Yeah. Like, Darwinism eventually would have worked. All right. So that ends this storyline. Then I think it comes up and says six months later, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. We can kind Late of. Late 2010. Even though these are some of my favorite scenes, we can kind of breeze through the story of this next part. Um, you get introduced to this ridiculous-looking gambling pimp or <laughs> who's a psycho. Uh, they wanted to get Ron Jeremy to play hair. this guy, and I don't think Ron Jeremy <laughs> was available. <laughs> I don't think Ron Jeremy turns down acting roles. So, uh, But anyway, so they're running this illegal casino. Uh, through a grocery store and uh, they kind of start to notice that things are being really weird uh, there's cops outside uh, it's a night they transfer their money uh, the big rollers didn't come in tonight they start to freak out and then all of a sudden you find out that 
Ron Jeremy Light's like buddy is actually Chris Martin from the band Coldplay. Yeah, it, and, during this whole scene, I love it because he's like, "Well, just let me start from square one, Brett." He's go ahead. like that guy is like really like going off the rails like the whole time, and Chris Martin's like, "Don't panic, bro," and so he doesn't. <laughs> but I don't know. Oh, he saw he saw spies, Josh. Yeah, he's trying to fix him the whole time, really. <sighs> Every tears of waterfall or something. I don't know. This crazy, kind of bunch of crazy stuff happens. They blow through the top, which I actually thought was really cool. Um, I did not expect that. And like a spiky shield thing across the field. It's like a Mario trap. <laughs> totally <laughs> unnecessary, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they're. It's, I don't know. It's, does anyone want to kind of like describe the chaos a little bit? Like, because I can't. Well. The uh, the ma- the casino boss guy or whatever he's going off uh, as soon as they get out of the car he's not trusting the driver Pedro is what he keeps calling him but that's not his name uh, so he's not trusting him and he's really suspicious of him and they get all the way up to the I don't know the control room of this underground casino and that's when things pop off and the casino boss shoots Pedro multiple times thinking he's like a rat, but he's not a rat uh, because that's when Chris Martin... He just wanted a job. Yeah. yeah he, Chris Chris Martin rips off his wig and his fake mustache or whatever, and then he kind of kicks everybody's ass or holds the casino boss hostage, right? Kicks everybody out, and then they get him out. They, he knocks him out, and he sends him up to the tunnel and the other guys are trying to get in and I thought that was kind of cool they finally get to the door he's trying to get out but he's actually hiding behind the door and then he kicks the crap out of all of them and then he goes out into the casino and these are some of my favorite action scenes I don't know uh, he's a fight coordinator of this movie so he like I wondered that cause like he seems like an action star you know what I mean like I, I don't know anything about let's say his real name is Cyril Raphael? I don't know if I'm saying his first name right, but I thought of like, like I could tell that Ted Mosby was like a parkour guy. Like he seems like an action star, just even in the way he carries himself and like executes his stunts and everything. Yeah, he's done, uh, has anybody ever seen, oh, it's a Jet Li movie, Kiss of the Dragon? Nope. Maybe that's, maybe that's not what it's called, but he's in that. I mean, he does a lot of really cool uh, stunt movies and uh, he's a big time like karate champion type guy kung fu and wushu and stuff like that so uh you're right yeah he's that's what he's i mean he does parkour too he's known for that but he's definitely known more for stunts and martial arts and he does the fight choreography and just stunt choreography he's like a pretty big name in it so um he kicks the crap out of these guys i think it all looks really cool like he does a lot of jumping like farther jumping than i've seen in movies and like just really cool but not like crouching tiger hidden dragon like ridiculous it's kind of a little more realistic more like a rush of blood to the head. <laughs> I love how all the guys that he's taking out are wearing pretty much the exact same thing, which is a ridiculous like <laughs> white vest and red shirt <laughs> because they're working this it's underground all casino. Could find. <laughs> yeah, and they look like a bunch of like video game NPCs just getting look like a bunch of waiters. Yeah, <laughs> they look so. They look so out of place. Like they would be the wait staff of this casino. <laughs> they probably are taken out. So then he he beats all those guys up, then goes outside, and he pretty much he's like they're in there waiting for you. And <laughs> for some reason, they open the door, and that guy's in there tied up, the the pimp guy, and he starts cussing him out. And then he's like, "Hey, your car!" And then he blows the car up, and he's like, "It doesn't squeak anymore," or whatever. And that's pretty much the end of that scene. Were you disappointed, Brett, that Manny wasn't a bigger part of the story? Who's Manny? The college-educated one who majored in I economics. Like... <laughs> the economics major? I, I, liked... <laughs> I thought he was going to be a big part of this movie. I, was... I thought he was a snitch. Well, they focused on him a lot. Like, they, like, brought up his name. They brought up, like, kind of, like, his backstory. He's educated. Sammy. And Sammy. then, or Sammy, yeah, and it just—he died. It just made no sense to me. 
This movie is paced really strangely. Like at this point, we're nearly forty minutes into the film, and the film's only eighty minutes. And we and the two mm-hmm. main characters haven't come together. <laughs> we haven't introduced like what the real conflict is. Like <laughs> there's, it's all these like mm-hmm. side quests setting up uh, forty minute adventure. Pap, do you think it's kind of like the, the way old kung fu movies did it, where they had set pieces that they kind of wrote the movie around? That's kind of why I think it's like that. Like. They knew they wanted to parkour through this one section of town. So they wrote that into the first like act. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No, that's definitely what it feels like. I mean, there is this kind of like overtone of like classism and government bad Eat the rich. kind of stuff. But it, but it seems like at the heart of it, it's like, yeah, let's just find a reason to get from action scene <laughs> to action scene <laughs> to action scene, which is a very good thing, Brett. Not not in a bad way at all. It's admirable. You get a little bit of the bur- the bourgeoisie and the conflict about ten minutes later when they actually have a really cool conversation about why they're like the way they are. But let's well, I guess we'll get to that. Chris Martin finds out his next assignment is uh, Taha has kidnapped and stolen a bomb and accidentally deactiv- accidentally activated it. It's going to go off in twenty four hours and it takes up what was it like eight blocks. Eight block radius or something like that. Eight miles. Eight kilometer. Eight kilometers, whatever the Europeans use. So yeah, it's uh, so they want him to go undercover, and he's not. He's not all about it. Uh, he, he usually what do you say? Usually takes about six months to get the lay of the land, learn who people are. He's a procrastinator. Or, <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> no, want to take the job. I don't. Well, he likes to not go in blind. So they say you're not going in blind. You're going to go in. You're going to meet somebody there. and But the problem is the other guy, Ted Mosby, doesn't know about it. So they set up this elaborate thing where he gets he beats the crap out of some cops. He gets beat up. And then he escapes and steals the armored vehicle or police vehicle or something like that. Pappy, is, is Ted Mosby fooled? No, not at all. And I think they make a comment, the directors or, or the police captain... Uh, foreign ministry or whatever it is they make some comment that it's gonna be it's easier to break out of prison than it is to break into district b13 mm-hmm. there's a pretty sweet sequence of them like driving in between these giant cinder, cinder blocks like the car getting like shot up and stuff and then subsequently in that chase the, the wheels are shot out so he smashes into tyrese gibson's car uh, back into <laughs> district b13 <laughs> and uh that causes all kind of problems <laughs> yeah but to, to your question ted mosby sees right through it i thought it was a plot hole that the police didn't follow him in there but i think that's a big point of the movie like even the police yeah. are scared of going into b13 yeah and you find out from mosby in a little bit that the police were pretty much the last vestige that left to make this an actual like civilization. You find out that, you know, when he was in eighth grade, he had to drop out because the schools left. And uh, what else left? I don't remember, but a bunch of stuff was shut down. Society left. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. And then like the last thing was the police finally were like, we can't do this. And then they left. So, yeah, I don't think the police had any business. Is Ted Mosby the Joker? Is this the Joker origin story before it comes Living over to a America? Society. <laughs> yeah. Not society. Dude, no, it's not him because if it was, he'd be doing parkour and he'd be like, da, 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 oh, da, da. on the Joker steps. Yeah. 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 Joker, the Joker steps. steps. Joker steps I is think... going to be, everyone's going to know what that means 20 years from now. Oh, are you talking about Joker steps? Yeah, I know what that is. <laughs> what are you going to say, Pat? Well, I, I think it does kind of, they do make a point of like listing off all these different like civil services that have left the area. Obviously the police being chief of those, but I think it is kind of like a, you like a, an interesting insight into French culture, right? Like, cause they obviously are a little bit more liberal, a little bit more government oriented and they, they see these civil services as essential. And it's almost like this is the fallout without the government intervention. I don't know if you picked up on that staunch Brett at all. Uh, are you talking to somebody else? <laughs> no, I'm talking to you. <laughs> oh, I don't answer to that. I'm not, say- I'm not saying it's yes or no, but I'm saying, do you think that's what, from a French perspective, can you put your little French beret on 
and see maybe that's what they're what they're trying to get. Brett at. chose a movie that he thought was just parkour and bombs. But little <laughs> There's did a lot of politics. A in very left leaning, very left leaning political movie. Come on, Brett, you can do this. Get in there, use your jab. Right, you got let this. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go get my beret, my champagne, my baguette, and my. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, bring the baguette. The baguette sounds good right now. Um, I, yeah, I think there's little hints of that throughout the entire movie, um, especially when we get to the actual, the two, when the buddy-buddy cop, the buddy-buddy kind of get together. Uh, I, I mean, I don't I don't want to get too deep into it. I don't, but I, I see that for sure. I think you're definitely right. Uh, they've just been abandoned by, I mean, yeah, they're probably a little more involved, the government over there. And for them to not want to be involved at all with this, it's pretty much just them giving up mm -hmm. and letting them kill each other. I don't know. And we can keep going on the movie, too, because I guess the other side of that is is that the government is literally trying to kill genocide you. all of the poor people. So maybe yeah. it's not that <laughs> pro-government. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we don't. You can see it both ways for sure. So, yeah, uh, Mosby handcuffs Chris Martin, and then Chris Martin has to fight as Pappy said, Tyrese, because uh, he drove into it like his Viper or whatever it was. And he trades him a car for a car, which I thought that was pretty cool. He needs to beat the guy up with the steering wheel. Uh, what happens? Oh, yeah, Leto's up there kind of spying on Taha's lair. And Chris Martin sneaks up behind him. And uh, you definitely see sparks between those two. That's another Coldplay joke. Um, we're running out of those. No, nah. no, we're not. Never? Well, I know Stevie loves Coldplay, so he's digging this. They're the worst. I'd rather <laughs> I'd rather buy a subscription to Goop than listen to Coldplay. <laughs> Dude, their first two albums are freaking classics, but after that... Anyway, so Lido is kind of spying on Taha to see what's going on, and the bald guy, Chris Martin, comes up, and he's like, hey, man, what's up? And then he handcuffs... Lido, and then they kind of talk about a plan and how they're going to work together. Yeah, okay, so there's just basically mm -hmm. a back-to-back -back sequence where one handcuffs the other, then the other one gets him back, and they're kind of like calling each other out, calling each other's bluff, because Mosby is like, I'm in charge because it's my town, and Chris Martin is like, I'm in charge because I'm a cop and I know what's right. Educated. So they got this back and forth going on, but basically they realize, like, right as K2 and the goons are coming up on them, that, like, if we work together, we might be able to get the sister and the bomb in one fell swoop. Yeah, and Chris Martin wants to go in all sneaky, but Mosby just picks up the phone and says, I'm across the street, I'm with a cop. <laughs> Mosby's strategy is negotiation. It's not even like they've sent in special forces at this point. Like you would think they'd be past offering the terrorists money. Like he's just like, no, I got this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How much money do you need? Mosby's like, yeah, two million. Yeah, it wasn't. I don't think it was his best. Mosby's a criminal prisoner, and he's like speaking on behalf of the police. How many millions they're <laughs> gonna give this guy? <laughs> so yeah, they get pretty much taken into Taha's office, and he's asking about the bomb. He wants the bomb back. The guy's like, why would I give you that? And they go through this really weird betting thing. I thought it was kind of funny. K2's like, uh, two million? Uh, four million? Like, Bro, are you sad they didn't go into K2's backstory more? I liked K2. Uh, and it's even sadder that he died like right after this movie what? came out. So. Did he really? Sorry, guys. Yeah. How? Damn. Uh, he had a health problem and he like died of a heart attack or something like that. Yeah, I could see that. But... That's sad, but I did wish they kind of would have gotten to K2's backstory more because he's probably one of the most likable characters that by the end of the movie. Definitely. He's actually, yeah, I, I talk about that in my like review. He's like, he's obviously a bad guy, but he's got like a heart and he's probably just made the best of the situation he's in. And then when he takes over, like immediately they stop being psychopaths. Like they actually work with the people. He cares about his town. It might not be the smartest guy, but he's actually rational and he doesn't make doesn't just start shooting people for the heck of it. Did we ever mention that he has the symbols K2 shaved into the back <laughs> of his head? <laughs> no, but that's classic. It's more like carved into his skull. But yeah, it's, it's back there. 
So they end up making, they get it to 20 million and uh, Chris Martin calls the government and he's like, uh, I need $20 million. And they're like, yeah, we don't have that budget. They got something else and they hung up on him. Red flag. He basically says, okay, they're transferring the money. So they take Chris Martin and Mosby into another room with the Ben Wallace poster. And mm-hmm. Pappy, what's, what's the plan that Mosby comes up with? So yeah, they're, they're whispering, and there's, the guy who's watching them has a really silly name. I think it's like Yo-Yo or something. Uh, he's supposed to be like guarding them. But the plan is to, I think it's like they're gonna tell them that they need to talk to the boss, and then like somehow they're gonna improvise, basically. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Am I, mi- am I missing anything? They do two sweet backflips in parallel. I think it's the main point of it, which is awesome. They uh, synchronized. Mosby had mentioned earlier in the movie that he had a secret way in and out of there, or at least out of there, that he dug with his teeth. And yeah, they do the flip, which is the main, like Pappy said, it's the main reason they did that. They didn't even care mm-hmm. if they lived, they just wanted to do that flip. It's orgasmic. <laughs> it is. <laughs> So uh, it's, this is probably the grossest part of the movie. They jumped to the toilet, and I don't know if you saw what they landed on, but uh, did anybody see what? Mattress? It's just a lot of poop. Uh, Andy Dufresne. Which, mm. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of a scene in Schindler's List, but just way not as gross. Um, so they get out. Do they, do they get out? Well, it kind of cuts to the downfall of Taha and... One thing I don't really get here is that because they gave the police, like, the actual wire number, they used, the police used that to drain all of the accounts. I'm guessing they hacked into it. Which, is that just the police, like, trying to get money? But anyway, the police, like, drain all of Taha's accounts. So he, like, also has already spent all the bullets in his gun. And so he's, like, <laughs> completely out of power. He's lost the respect of his men because he's just an asshole drug addict all the time. And who can't pay him. Mm-hmm. And so K2 speaks with his actions and turns around and lets his thugs do the deed. <laughs> yeah. I just thought this scene was so awesome. I, I just read this book called The Dictator's Handbook, and it's mm-hmm. a long roundabout way to get to basically, like, the people – who are like in power and, and like lists a bunch of like gangsters or dictators, but like basically they're only as strong as the money is strong. Mm. And the second he doesn't have the money to pay off, like the essentials, the people with the guns in his troop, it's over. They just turn on him and fire and there's a new boss in town. I, I just thought that was so smart and cool. Yeah, no, I, and that's really cool. like uh, Stevie mentioned earlier. He, he gets up, clicks on the gun, the guns obviously empty. And then he kind of realizes it's over for him. It's a great return to return to his character. He doesn't plead or beg. He just they all put the guns up and he takes his finger and like does you know, like he's shooting an imaginary gun and goes out like a boss. Pretty much. Well so. he did just put his face in a giant pile of heroin. Oh yeah. Uh, he probably so wasn't he's feeling flowing anything in his veins. He does not go out like a boss. <laughs> he goes out like a psychopath out of touch with reality. <laughs> <laughs> True. Also, when they kidnapped the sister six months earlier, they pretty much turned her into a drug fueled. I mean, she's just a junkie, and that that chain they chain up and they drag her around like a dog. So that's one of the reasons why. Uh, that's the main reason Mosby is going to help Chris Martin. They finally get away, and they meet up with K two, who, like we mentioned earlier, he's rational. He really wants this bomb gone, so they let him go. They let the two guys go try to get the bomb, and they're going. Stevie, when they're about to the roof, who did they meet up with? The Yeti? The Yeti, who's the biggest man I've ever seen in my entire life. Which is kind of shocking, because, I mean... Okay, so the way I see District B-13... Like... Are they going through hunger at all? Are are they going through hardships at all? Or does this, like, Taz gang just control everything? Stevie, there's no farms in B- District B13. Like they're straight up like, eating. They, like what's the food supply? It's here? just I, I'm so they're cool brushing their teeth with Bud Light. It's all roller food from they Seth have and a grocery store. They have, yeah, my, Mikey's right. They have a grocery store. I'm guessing uh, they just 
pay, like the grocery store people pay the police or whatever for them to come in. They can't leave, but the people can deliver them food. I mean, they have an economy. Because the Yeti is not missing any meals. No. Like, and it's not like... It's not like this man's like muscular by any means. He's just fat. Like so, it just tells me that like, he has a very unhealthy diet. And I'm just questioning, where is he getting all this sustenance? He's naturally he's big. He people. played professional basketball in Israel. He's at one point he was seven one, four hundred fifty five pounds. Holy shnikes! He was actually I'm looking at on... his profile now. He's from Bangor, Maine, yep. the home of it and all those other Stephen King novels. Jeff Rundum. Yeah, he died as well, but he was on Celebrity Fit Club. Huh. He lo- he got down to 363. Uh, but yeah, he played professional basketball for 10 years in uh, Israel. But yeah, he looks like a... There's like videos of him and stuff like that, so... That's pretty cool, but yeah, he died as well. Um, New spoilers tradition. Point out every actor that's died in the film we're watching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pick a movie from like 1940 and be like, "He's dead. He's, yeah, dead. he's, he's dead. dead. He's dead. He's dead. Oh, he died of this. Oh, he died of." <laughs> it happens, Josh. Uh... But so they fight. Uh, Chris Martin, for some reason, because he's super trained, he's like, "I love surprises." <laughs> he goes and gets get the crap kicked out of him uh, by the Yeti. Yeah, he really had a head massive. full of dreams there. So uh, Mosby comes up with the idea to. What kind of cop doesn't have a gun? Where's this guy's gun at? Well, they were kind of just had to escape. They probably should have gotten nah, the gun, though. but then nah, again, nah. I don't think they thought they were going to run into the Yeti. Uh, he does have some no twisted logic here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're all. Uh, why doesn't uh, uh i don't know k2's situation but why doesn't he go up to the roof with them and be like hey k or yeti i'm in charge now Ta- or taha's dead but this bomb's gonna go off the reason he doesn't have a gun is so he can slam dunk a cinder block on the yeti's head like ben wallace <laughs> slam dunking a basketball <laughs> yeah that's exactly why mosby ties him up in a pretty cool little flippy flippity do scene and yeah he just gets slammed on it's a video game Someone want to like kind of start us taking us home here on the roof? Yeah, Lola's trying to commit suicide. She is yeah. at the end of her rope. She's doused herself in gasoline. She's chained up. I think at one point she tries to set the bomb off so that thing will just drag her away into existence or to non existence. But um, yeah, there's a lot of slow mo try- Lola trying to set herself on fire for a good five minutes. Yeah, while they're trying to get up there, they don't. They obviously don't know that's going on, but. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to light these soggy matches <laughs> with gasoline. This movie yeah, is a series of ticking clocks. I don't know if you noticed that, but like the elevator going up is the first one at the very beginning, and then there's like, I mean, every like the 24 hours that this bomb is going to go off is a huge one, and then like her slowly knocking over the gasoline, then trying to light match after match. It's like, and then the next scene, if we can go into it, Brett. Yeah, keep going. It's the sequence that's needed to defuse the bomb, right? It's yeah. like it's like they make a password, like Spores makes a password for all of their oh, all of geez. our secret accounts. It's like the date and our names and the district. <laughs> uh but but Ted Mosby's able to put it together and figure it out that like and and also that they wanted him to detonate the bomb and that yeah. Ted Mosby thinks that the whole timer thing is just like a red herring that's not going to go off. He starts typing it in and uh, Mosby tries to talk him out of it, but this is kind of another thing going back to the difference between their opinions on the government and life. Chris Martin like swears by the government. The government would never do this. They would never put me in here like this. I'm here to save everybody. And Mosby's like, dude, you're blind. You mean nothing to them. He's a real politic. Uh, Josh, gosh, I love it. Oh, man. I don't. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> what, <laughs> what? So, like, how? I, I don't know. I think it might make sense, but I, don't, I just can't quite put my finger on it. How did the government know? Like, why would they want it to not go off when it blows up? Was there a rationale behind 
I don't think the government's very smart at all because the range on this thing is like eight miles away and we see a shot of where it's pointed at now that Taha has set up. You can see the Eiffel Tower. It's like, yeah. it's got to be less than eight miles away. Or just You're gonna blow up half of Paris with if this thing goes off. Track it with GPS. Or remote <laughs> detonate it too as a backup. I don't know why they didn't do that. Exactly. I think they just wanted it to be like no trace back to them. Like I saw someone review it. Why didn't they just shoot the bomb in there? Well, that's harder to explain than it got stolen and they accidentally got... It was an accident, bro. It accidentally got detonated by bad people and that's why they're dead. We had nothing to do with it. The real guy who messed up was the guy who set the password. Uh, A little too obvious (laughs) from that IT guy there. Pretty low security. (laughs) And the... I targeting uh the last two numbers is the location we want to blow up. I mean, come on, IT yeah. guy. I wish I wish yeah. the Not password would have spelled out like kill those fuckers in I was district say the same thing. B13 conspiracy yeah. theory. <laughs> <laughs> that would've been a little too on the nose, but that would have been hilarious. But Brett, so, if I remember correctly, like Lola's the one who ends up kind of like tilting the scales on this fight, right? Like she and she says something like, "I'd rather die for my brother's ideas than your that, ideas." Yeah, it's terrible ideas. Lovers' than your ideas, terrible. Pappy. I'd rather, yeah, lover. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so they fight and uh, she ends up saving the day, and then it gets down to zero and it doesn't go off, and Chris Martin's just devastated. Because he realizes, no matter how many good things he does, betrayed by the country he loves. Exactly, which is That's so exactly stupid. What it is. I mean, he's alive. He should have a second lease on life here. He should be pumped. Well, he does. He does. That's exactly what happens. He just disappointed that he doesn't mean anything. To but him. he would have been a martyr, Josh. He's come to realize that the government betrayed him. Yep. Yeah. Everything he's known as a lie, <laughs> a badge, doesn't mean anything. He's lost. <laughs> Yep. So, uh, to end this movie, uh, Mosby and Chris Martin just stroll right into Parliament or wherever they're at. and Bomb in hand. With the bomb in hand. <laughs> and they lay it down. They're like, what's the code again? Uh, they kind of like fake like they're going to turn it on and the people freak out. And then they bust them out and they're like, I, you were going to blow this up. Why are we going to do that? And they're like, oh, taxes. They, <laughs> taxes and we couldn't <laughs> we couldn't control we couldn't control you anymore this was for the better of everybody the Dow all this find was out. set into motion is because rich people didn't want to pay their taxes <laughs> which doesn't make any sense they said they're not sending any civil services to district B13 what, what, a couple what of taxes are they paying what? maybe they have to pay for the food that's in there they gotta pay for the wall somebody had to pay for it Oh, B thirteen will pay for that wall. <laughs> damn it! <laughs> Can I have another note on this last scene when they walk in there with the bomb? Like having worked in production for my whole career, like they're carrying the bomb in a le- flat out lens case. That's what that is, and maybe mm-hmm. they carry <laughs> nuclear warheads and something similar. But that is like the quintessential. This is lens a pelican case. case. Yeah. <laughs> so recognizable and and brett i know you hate when we don't talk about the movie that was made and i offer up new suggestions but this is this is less than a 90 minute movie if there's one scene in between chris martin doing the the mission at the casino he goes to like some french cafe he downs some champagne smokes a cigarette and then talks to this news reporter guy and just being like what are you up to he's like just going to work at the news station and just like somehow planting the seed that 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 they have connections in the French media that would have gone so far as opposed to like, they're somehow like hacking the airwaves and putting this on every channel like that. It could have just been handled way better. I think that's probably true. Maybe when you write a maybe when you write a movie, you can add that. And look at that, just, Josh. The real joking, hero of the day is the production guy. <laughs> so the... I think we all learned a thing here that TV really is very Seriously, important. he's like, is the audio okay? And it's like, dude, if 
if he didn't have the audio, okay, you just got completely fucked because your whole plan <laughs> yeah. just showed his hand. I also don't think the clip they kept playing on repeat was the best clip they could have played. Like, I thought the stuff they said before that was better, but... We just sent one of our best videographers to Chicago to do a story, and he got, like, the receiver and transmitter mixed up. Like, it happens. Like, they got a lot riding on this. Yo, audio okay? Mm -hmm. After the whole spiel went down? I really hated that part. I thought it was just, like, a dick, like, like an F you to the guy. I thought that's what that was. Kind of like a... Was that a good take? Smile, good take? Smile, you're on the <laughs> Brett, take maybe, thing. but he, <laughs> good take. he looks out the window and the camera guy gives him a big cheesy thumbs up. Like, yep, got the audio. <laughs> we got him, boys. Journal- journalist saved the day in a Brett pick. What wow. else is new? Ugh. Man. No, journalist Happy, yeah. I have a question day. for you. Yes, yeah, Stevie. Is this a northern, eastern, southern, and a western all mixed into one? Oh, I forget what all of those mean. So I don't a, remember. A northern is like the law is good and true. An eastern is like one man within the law tears down the law. Then it's like a southern is an outsider tears down the law. And a western is a reformation of the law. It really is then, yeah, because like you have those two main guys. Yeah, I think it's a mixture of all like directions. They're yeah, both camps. Yeah. yeah, it makes it really interesting. And like I said, like... I don't. I, I was just kind of kidding, Brett. Earlier, I don't think this movie is very political, but it it is. It, it it makes it tie into more like it could be really tropey and dumb having like this walled off area, like very Escape from New York esque. But it, it takes it in a whole new direction, which I think is really cool. That was actually one of the criticisms to this movie. Uh, some people had was that they said it's just like Escape from New York. Now I haven't seen that movie. Really? Um, it's trust me, it's on my list for uh, spoilers picks because. I heard it's really cool. So, and it's Kurt Russell. But yeah, I heard it's very similar to this. So, but they kind of put their own spin on it, apparently. So, uh, let's just finish. Let's just wrap up this movie and then we'll can get to some final thoughts. Um, so, all of a sudden, I, I, some time has passed in between this scene and the ending. Um, a law was passed about tearing the wall down and bringing everything back in and trying to build up this community again. And, he got a bunch of money. B thirteen, great again. <laughs> Did Mosby get some money or something? Like he, he got a reward, enough to buy an apartment in a different district. But he apparently. wants to go back home. That's his home. So him and his sister wife, um, they <laughs> they go and they buy a house together, and you know they do the whole "Don't be a stranger." And Chris Martin can't just be like, "I won't." He's like, "I can't promise anything." Basically, like, yeah, we're not that good of friends. I'll probably never see you again. But it ends all happy, and Mosby still doesn't quite trust the government. But even Chris Martin's still like, hey, it's a law. They passed it. It's got to happen. So happy ending for everybody. The girl kisses him to get him to come back, oh, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, threesome. You, me, my brother. Oof. Jesus. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. You, too. me, my brother, Sam, and Frodo. We got this. So Jesus. that's the end of B13. Uh, does anybody have any final thoughts before we do yes or no's? Well, I hope the French rap song is playing right now Me to too. take us out. I freaking jam. Did anybody else just flat out dance when that came on, like by yourself? I was, I was, bo- I was bobbing in my head, man. I, I thought it's tight. I listened to it earlier tonight too. <laughs> I got pumped. French rap always reminds me of a FIFA soundtrack. It feels like I'm playing <laughs> yeah. FIFA. Yeah, <laughs> so that's true. Let's uh, start with Happy. Uh, yeah, Brett, I know that you got some shit last week when you picked this, and uh, in between, uh, in, in the spoiler, man, you, you tossed out a couple different ideas, and I actually am really, really glad that you picked this. Uh, it's going to be a hard yes for me. It's a dumb action movie to be sure, but it's a really cool dumb action movie. Uh, I wish, I wish it was more cinematic. You know what I mean? I don't think there was ever like a shot that I was like, "Wow, it's a really cool shot," or "Like this is framed really interestingly." Like, like I said, like none of you guys saw 
the spray painted giant face of the, like the main bad guy and that was such an awesome detail like why not just have a scene in front of that why not show it off but that being said i have like no real complaints it's 80 minutes it was super entertaining uh <coughs> My fiance dipped out right away, which is funny. Brett, I talked to you about it. You said, yeah, Brittany wasn't into it at all either. So I wonder if it's just like for a certain demographic, but I'm right in that demographic. So hard yes for me. Sweet. Uh, Mikey? Uh, yeah, I mean, it obviously has problems. It's a B movie, uh, a B-13 movie. <laughs> um, yes. There, I mean... I'm surprised you guys thought it wasn't political. It's obviously political. It's obviously pointing in a socialist direction or whatever is what the main characters are wanting. But I don't think they got there on purpose. I think it was more like, all right, we got this bomb. Uh, what is the? Why do we have this bomb and uh, what are they demanding from it? And it's like, oh, they're demanding money. Well, we can't have that. Well, why? Because the government didn't pay their taxes or, or B-13 <laughs> isn't paying their taxes or whatever. It's like... I think they just kept writing, and it ended up being like, oh, I guess they just want socialism in B-13 or whatever, and they accidentally got to that point. Universal basic uh, income. <laughs> yeah, but I think, uh, like we said earlier, they really just started off with these like set pieces of action that they wanted to get through, because I think the action is pretty decent, uh, especially with, like the I assume, the zero budget that they had. So These guys aren't actors either. I mean... They're just stunt guys doing all this stuff. So I think you get a pretty decent uh, acting job out of them for not being like real actors. They're more stunt guys, but it's an entertaining movie. I mean, it's cheesy for sure, um, but I like just straight up martial arts action movies. And parkour was like so new at the time. So it was like cool to see like this is the very beginning of that. And I mean, Parkour was just like in James Bond like two movies ago, so it's like obviously a huge thing. So it's cool to see. So was a yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't, I wasn't sure if you ever said I was like into what you were saying. <laughs> All right, Stevie. Yeah, I forgot to say. Stevie. Oh uh, yeah, I'll give this a hard yes. I had zero expectations when I heard what movie was picked for what we're going to be spoiling, um, but it actually pleasantly surprised me. Um, it's pretty groundbreaking I think for the year it came out what they were doing it was especially with what I think was probably limited budget what they had like what Mikey said yeah bro I'll give this a hard yes a lot of fun to watch uh, very cool movie great great pick thanks Josh I think it's kind of funny that in my mind's eye I always thought this movie was Russian <laughs> so <laughs> 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 it just feels so grimy and like r- Russian, and everyone's so bad in it, and so many people are murdered. Um, it really takes place in an alien, almost sort of terrain that you're on in this District B13, and that's not just to reference District Nine or whatever. Like, it's just such a grimy world. I, I don't think the cinematography, like Pat's like pap says is very good but i think the maybe something with the color treatment and just like the mood of the movie is kind of consistent and just in that grimy feel and it puts you in that place um i love k2 he starts out just cold-hearted murderer um he's basically like samuel jackson almost like samuel jackson drinks a sprite and then blows away people K2 bites a spicy boy and blows away some people. <laughs> but by the but by the end you like want to see the, his shaved head a lot and hear him talk and stuff. He's hilarious. Um, and ultimately like we've been doing a lot of Fast and Furious and it's kind of like that, but it's in French, so the bad acting doesn't come through as much like I said earlier in the pod. So, huge yes, huge walk down memory lane, Brett. Thanks a lot for picking it. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, I as I was walking in here earlier to get set up for this pod, I thought to myself, the first time I saw this movie with Josh, probably about 12 years ago, I really liked it. The, when I watched it last night, I like loved it. I love the villain. I love Taha. K2, I think I was kind of like everyone, a lot of people liked him. Uh, he had a cool character arc. 
but you're always looking for character arcs in movies, you know, like Josh kind of explained it. Bad guy, but probably forced to be a bad guy to survive, and then his true colors come out at the end. But yeah, it's not like the best movie. Um, I thought, though, there was a good camera shot, though, that guy falling in between the stairs. I thought that was cool. <laughs> Dude, his, like, when they subtitle him, it just says, God fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Did it really? Yeah. So, yeah, this is a, a, a solid hard yes for me, too. So I really uh, I was nervous about this movie and I watched it last night and I was really buoyed. I'd like to personally thank Stevie because I was super nervous. I thought there were elements that all three, all four of you guys would like. But when Stevie told me that like a bunch of elements of all of his favorite movies put into this one, I felt a lot more It was more a buoyed, giant so. action movie of every action movie ever made. And it was yeah. enjo- very enjoyable to watch. And it, I knew Mikey would like it because it's, like Pappy said, it's 80 minutes long. That's perfect length for, for Mikey. So I'm just really glad I picked this. I'm glad you guys liked it, and it's definitely a solid yes for me. And I think we all know what the food is. It's a spicy boy sausage, right? Brett, can I add one thing? <laughs> Absolutely. That part where, um, was it, Chris Martin decides to drive and uh, Ted Mosby decides to run and lands on the car... I think what would have made this the greatest action movie ever made is if at that point they got out of the car and did that Arnold Schwarzenegger and Apollo Creed like like handshake or like high <laughs> oh, five. And from like, Predator. Yeah, they did that from Predator. It would have been the greatest action movie ever made. Just a zoom in on their muscles right there. That would have been sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Missed opportunity. Exactly. But great movie. You have a movie, Pat? Holy shit. That was like a half hour of trivia. It was not. It was 20 minutes. Be fun to edit. Man, I just dominated that trivia. Woo, I'm good. Uh huh. You got a movie, Pat? Yep. Mikey made that trivia fun, though. I laughed my ass off. Yeah, he always, <laughs> yeah, he always does. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I had a blast. Yeah, all right. We're back with Trivia Master Mikey, and uh, Pappy's going to tell us our next movie. Yeah, you know, like Josh uh, talked about earlier in the podcast, there's a lot going on in the world, and there's been, you know, sometimes we just need some, some comfort films uh, from, from certain parts of the world, and I think... It's been a long time since we've done one of these movies. I think it's time for us to get down to business and defeat the Huns. Let's do Mulan, (gasps) since we can't see Mulan in theaters. I've never seen it. Yes. I thought maybe you were going to pick Contagion or Outbreak or something. I was like, that's too soon, bro. On the Aladdin episode, I edited you out saying uh, it sounds terrible (laughs) to Mulan when I described the plot. So I'm excited for you to see it, Brett. (laughs) I want to see it. Brittany's not a fan, so we haven't been able to watch it. All right. Well, uh, sorry that that went so long. Hopefully you, some of you enjoyed it. Uh, I know at least one person who didn't, but nobody cares about him. Uh, Thanks for listening. Good luck out there. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And we'll see you soon. This is Spoilers. Spoiler Man here. If you enjoyed what you heard today, subscribe on SoundCloud or iTunes. The rules of this game is I have 32 quotes. Uh, We went a little long, so maybe I could shorten it, but hopefully it'll go fast. I'm going to give quotes in order to people. And you're going to look through this list of characters on here. Uh, These are all famous French fictional characters. Uh, If you get a quote correct, if you answer one correctly, you get a point. If you miss the quote, you lose a point. Um, You can send a quote to a specific person. Oh, um, God. Yeah, kind (laughs) of like I think Josh or Stevie or something did that once. If they get it right, they get a point and you lose two points. If they get it wrong, they lose one point and you get two points. You can pass at any time for no penalty. You're just not going to get a point. Uh, and the quote will pass down the line until someone gets it right. And that person will get a point. And then 
uh, once it gets answered correctly, we'll go back to the order we were on. Uh, there are 32 quotes, and there are 38 possible guesses, so there are like six decoy dummy names. Does everyone understand? Yes. Mm-hmm. So okay, there's so. one one pass to a specific person or infinite specific person? Whatever, person's whatever you want. You just, you, I mean, you just got to be smart. You don't want to lose points. Just... So if you okay. miss a quote, you lose a point? Yeah, like you, a pass is like strategic. You're not going to get a point, but you might not lose a point, but you might be giving somebody else the opportunity to get extra points. Right, right. And if it so goes around like, the horn and no one gets it, is it dead or is it? does someone have to guess eventually? I didn't even think about that. What do you guys think? Guys, keep going or just one once around the horn? Once. Once. Once sounds good. I mean, what's 32 okay, what times infinity? <laughs> <laughs> so Mikey's going for... <laughs> I'm going to get it to at that point. Way, we, need, we need a strict shot clock for this because this yeah, could we'll take 40 minutes. Yeah. yeah. I'll, be, I'll be on the clock. I'm just getting my stuff written out. All right, so I did this at random. I went to a, a random generator, and I did the order and the quotes. So if you get easy ones or hard ones, it's not my fault. I just did it randomly. So Mikey is up first, and I'm going to give you your quote. Are you ready? Yep. Look, I know it's stupid and weird, but neither of us can do this alone, so we got to do it together, right? You with me? So let's do this thing. Oh, Jesus Christ, Brett. Yeah. Um, I know this isn't your forte, but... I mean, this could be any of them. Uh, let's go... Jean-Luc Picard. That's incorrect. Good guess. Great guess. So that's... Uh, Negative one for Mikey. And then Pappy. Who was this? You, Wait, you what? Go. Oh, yeah, yeah, you uh, don't go. My bad. Uh, so the answer to that one was... Whoa, whoa, whoa uh, I can't... Oh, okay, go ahead. Do you want to do that? Do you want to do steals? No, no. That would take that way take too long. long. Okay, that was Alfredo Linguini. Does anybody know what that's from? Yeah, this is from Ratatouille. Yep. All right, so... Uh, Pappy's next. You knew that one? Uh, no, I wouldn't have got that one right. I like that movie, though. <clears throat> Never seen it. Oh, jeez. All right. Uh, Pappy. Moi, I have, I have big bones. Ooh. Um, I feel like... Ah, shit. Shot clock! I'm going to pass this to, I'm going to pass this to Josh. <laughs> Ooh. Josh? I'll say Quasimoto. <laughs> no, that's not right. Ah! So, so, Pappy, you get what? Uh, Five points? No, you get two points, and Josh loses a point. So that's a good good turn. Okay. So, Josh, you're up. So who was it? Ready? Oh, uh, it's Madame Maxime from Harry Potter. Oh. Uh. Josh, oh, no, I'm never going back out there again because of what happened today. No, this is where I belong. Sure, I'll pass to Pappy. Oh, horse is that, manure. Is that Remy? No. No. Man, Stevie, are you, are you foaming at the mouth right now to get it's these? It's Quasimodo. It is Quasimodo. Ah, yeah, I can picture him saying that now. No, So, dummies. Josh, you just got two points. Woo! And Pappy lost a point. Hey, Pappy, All that right, was a net to... gain, though, for us. Let's keep doing that. Yeah, it's like fun. <laughs> Stevie. What's up? Well, it's my favorite. Far-off places, daring sword fights, magic spells, a prince in disguise. <sighs> Read that again. Well, it's my favorite. Far-off places, daring sword fights, magic spells, a prince in disguise. Uh... There's so many characters on here. I can't remember which one that is. Chocolate. Hold Five. on. Um, I'll say... 
I don't know, I'll say Gaston. Incorrect. All right. That was Bell. Oh my god, so close. It was close. All right, so uh, that's a negative one. Mikey, you're up. You ready? Yep. Ah, uh, yes. When she comes in, give her a dashing, debonair smile. Come, come, show me the smile. Uh, I'll pass this to Josh. <laughs> uh, I'll go with Lumiere. It is. It is Let's Lumiere. Good job, Josh. Go. <laughs> that little candlestick so Josh, boy. Josh gets a point. And Mikey loses two points. The tank is on, baby. Plenty, <laughs> plenty of chances to come back. All right, nice. uh, so who's up? Pappy? I think so. How odd that it should end this way for us after so many stimulating encounters. I almost regret it. Where shall I find a new adversary so close to my own level? Going to pass that to Josh. <laughs> Um, I know this. It's uh, it's the, f- it's the guy from. Oh, wait. Can I pass this? Wait, I, I forgot to say something. You guys can ask me anytime a name what they're from. If what? You don't know. Wait, what? Oh, any of well, these that names on the list? The whole game. Any of the names on the list? You guys have not needed to do that yet. Gene so Gerard. Otherwise. What's Gene Gerard from? Uh. Ricky Bobby. <laughs> Ginger. Uh, what? Five. That can't be right. Four. I know. I thought his name two. was John. Uh, it is. Uh, I, I know who this is, but I, I don't know his name. Um, I'll just pass to Stevie, I guess. What? <laughs> was this a oh, double pass? Is that allowed? On a f- you can't double pass. No double passes. <laughs> Josh, answer. Which is the guy from Princess the Bride? Of passing. Can you just tell me that? There is nobody from Princess Bride oh. on here. I, I pass then. All right. I just pass in no. general. <laughs> All right, so Pappy gets two points there, and Josh loses what a point. The heck? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Josh. Why yeah, okay, can guess? I just guess then? I'll say Remy. Incorrect. Okay. It was <laughs> Renee, I Be- love it. Renee Belloc. <laughs> From Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, we Belloc. We did that movie. All right. I used to wish so. Uh, by the way, I hope you guys are like process of eliminationing it and stuff. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I used to wish so hard for my parents to be alive again, but you can't make something happen just by wishing for it. That's super sad. Yeah. Who's that to? That's, good. That's to Josh. That's going to float on over to uh, Mikey. <laughs> mm. Dead parents, huh? Who has got the dead parents? <laughs> um, I'm going to guess that it... I don't know any of these characters. Uh, Let's go... Let's go Phantom. Incorrect. He seems pretty sad. <laughs> that was Madeline. Ah, mm. All right. All right. I take your Which word Madeline? for it. I don't know. <laughs> Madeline. <Almost> one. <laughs> all right. The French, the French one. <laughs> ah. This is going splendidly, by the way. Uh, so, the littlest uh, girl on two straight lines. Stevie's up. Three duels in one day. Hmm. Oh God! Uh, let's go with da- process. Let's go with D'Artagnan. That's correct. Damn son. All right. He's a musketeer, bruh. Mikey. Oh, it- I just went. Oh, you did? I no, he, he, that's he's right. I, I've got an all I of these wrong. Him. Passed it to you, Mikey. He, you're up. Uh, oh, it's no use. She's so beautiful, and I'm well. Look at me. Uh, Beast? Yes. Nice. Okay, Pappy. Mm-hmm. Can't think of a better place for hand-to-hand combat. You fight almost as well as a man. <gasps> Sexist. 
Oh man. Um gotta pass that to Josh. <laughs> Primey. Um Phantom of the Opera. No. Stevie, do you know? Uh if I were to guess that, I would say pfft, Um Phoebus. That is correct. But you don't get any points. Yeah. Yeesh. Who passed that? Phoebus? I passed yeah, that. Who's Phoebus? It's from uh Hunchback of Notre Dame. Hmm. Uh, uh, keeping score, this is really hard. Um, okay, uh, Josh, you're up. Mm-hmm. Make it quick. I want to retire. Story of my life. Glass Joe. Yeah, that is correct. Hell yeah. Let's go. He's, for, he's from Punch Out. Yep. Clean, clean, cleanerific, cleanerino, close to godliness. <laughs> uh, um, I was worried I made these quotes too easy. Are you sure? I was worried I did. Apparently, I didn't. God. Um. Clean. I have, I Clean. Have... Pass it. No. Uh. Hey, actually. I'll pass that to Josh. <laughs> what the hell? Say it again, Brett. <laughs> clean, clean, cleanerific, cleanerino, close to godliness. Cinderella. Nope. Uh, that's what I was going to say. That is Remy. Oh. What's Remy from? Ratatouille. Ratatouille. Nice. Oh, okay, after three rounds, Mikey, negative three, Pappy, four, yes. Josh, four, Stevie, two. Damn. Oh, Pap. You wily right. SOB. Mikey, for justice, for Paris, and for her own salvation, it is my sacred duty to send this un- unholy demon back where she belongs. Hmm. Uh, tips hat, Milady de Winter. No, <laughs> no, it's Judge Frollo. Yeah, man, you know you know Hunchback pretty well, don't you? Well, it's kind of annoying me that I can't steal any of these. I'd be winning. All right, Pappy. Yeah, who was that? Claude. It's a bad guy from Hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah, what's his name though? Claude. Claude Frollo. Claude Frollo. Ms. Euro O'Malley, you could have lost your life. Uh, Duchess? I knew you'd know that, yep. Ooh. Uh, Josh, mm-hmm. now then, what do we know? One, that Professor Fastbinder and his daughter have been kidnapped. Two, that someone has kidnapped them. Three, that my hand is on fire. <laughs> Say that one more time for the people oh, in the back. Now then, what do we know? One, that Professor Fastbinder and his daughter have been kidnapped. Two, that someone has kidnapped them. Three, that my hand is on fire! <laughs> is it uh, Inspector Jacques Clouseau? Yes. Yes! Stevie. What's up? And you will starve again unless you learn the meaning of the law. Ugh. And you will starve again unless you know the meaning of the law. I'll pass that to... Pappy. Can I hear it again? And you will starve again unless you learn the meaning of the law. Jean Valjean? Incorrect. So close. It's Javert. Fuck. Yeah. That's a that's a big get for Stevie. Is that the last, he just tied, last one? Tied for a second. 
Do you want it to be? No, no, no. Javert, no. is that the last guy on the list? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, by the way, I created this big list with big names so you guys could use process of elimination to be a lot easier. All right. Yeah, we're doing that. All right. <laughs> Mikey, we invented democracy, existentialism, and the menage a trois. <laughs> George Costanza. Um, uh, Jean Girard. That's correct. With really fluffy pancakes. Nice. <laughs> Pappy. Yo. Bill, don't look at me. I'm idiot. I'm going to pass that to Josh. I think that might be from Phantom of the Opera. <laughs> Say guess. What? Incorrect. <laughs> that is a good guess, though. That's Fleur de la Cour from Harry Potter. Uh, really? Josh. What happened to her? Why did she say that? Because she's uh, the seven Harry. She turns into uh, Harry at the seventh book to try to cause a diversion. <laughs> it's really annoying. She's the prettiest person in the book. And it's like, yeah, look at me. Yeah. I look like All Harry. Right. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> He's poor. Dang it. Josh, you're yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, This sash was a gift to me from the Queen of America. I think I actually know this one. Um, I'm going to pass it to Mikey, though. Remember, you can pass. Just pass. I don't want to do that when I get two points. Okay. Uh, hmm. The Queen of America. Uh, Jean-Luc Picard? No, it's... And the future America? Portos from Three Musketeers. Did not know that. <laughs> nope. Can we get a score update? Yeah, after this next one. Okay. Stevie. Hmm. Oh, gosh. Uh, because, Marcel, my sweet, we're going to make a film. <sighs> There's so many names on here. That's why you're supposed to be crossing off the ones you've used. Nope. Um... Five. Um, no Four. idea. I'll pass say... It uh, pass it to me. I'll pass that to Josh. I don't even remember what it said anymore because Marcel my sweet we're going to make a film Shoshana yes <laughs> Stevie's like second favorite movie ever I thought he was going to get it what movie it's Inglorious Bastards uh, Shoshana that was a big get for Josh okay after four rounds or whatever <sighs> Mikey negative four Pappy six Josh seven Stevie, two. Is this the last round? Do we round? want Josh to win? Okay, Mikey. You need to come back here. Just kill me. <laughs> you see, there is only one constant, <laughs> one universal. It is the only real truth. Causality, action, reaction, cause and effect. Uh, I'm going to stick with the old steadfast and hearty choice of Jean-Luc Picard. <laughs> From here on out, that's my answer until uh, we just get through this. <laughs> I thought that was one of the easier ones. Does anybody know? Is that Monte Cristo? Say? No. That's the Merovingian from Matrix Revolutions, a Reloaded. Oh, yeah, everybody remembers that one. Right. I don't even know what you just said. <laughs> the, Mer the Merovingian, he's the French guy who's got the hot wife and... Lipstick? I'm not wearing any lipstick. 
The architect plays okay. cards with him on Tuesdays. It's cool. <laughs> Happy. <laughs> yes. You go back and you tell the cardinal we will continue to perform our sworn duty, which is to protect the king, and we will use every <clears throat> means within our power to fight him. Passing it to Josh. What is LeFou from? Can I just ask that? No. Beauty. Yes. Beauty and the Beast. Uh, fighting the king? Uh, I'll just do Lion Court. That sounds like someone that deals with kings. Less that. Incorrect. It's Athos. Three Musketeers. Idiot. That was a big get, Happy. <laughs> Thank you. Josh. Yep. We must pray for our sins. On second thought, God's often busy. Doesn't sound like Pepe Le Pew. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to throw this over to... Uh, Mikey, just because I know he'll guess John Luke Picard again. So, Yep, <laughs> you got it. If he's gonna keep doing that, I'm gonna cause him to. For, I'm gonna get him out of here. All right, I'm um, keep going. <laughs> Jean Luc Picard, it is. All right, the answer is Aramis from Three Musketeers. <gasps> Huge get. No one knows Three Musketeers. Apparently not. All right, uh, Stevie. Yeah. You need, you, need, you need this to get back in. How did I escape with difficulty? How did I plan this moment? Edmund Dantes. Good call. Nice. Whew. Kind of Monte Cristo. What did you say, though? Mikey. What was your answer? How many are left? Edmund Dantes. Okay. I thought there was another syllable in there. Mikey. I'm going to just save you some time. <laughs> no, Mikey, Mikey. Mikey, listen to this. Where are you, my little object of Yeah, art? I'm going Jean-Luc Picard, 100%. All right. Probably the easiest one on the board, but okay. Oh my god. I can't make up this oh my deficit. <laughs> if if they start passing to you and you start getting it, you're gonna get two points every time. Unless it's Jean Luc Picard every time, I don't think so, Brett. Alright, the answer to that, even though I didn't even get to read the quote, was Pepe Le Pew. Pepe. Yes. Wait, no, no, no. It's uh, it's Yeah, it is yeah. Sorry. Don't be afraid. I'm going to give you the choice I never had. Passing it to Josh. Oh, this is big. You guys are tied. Don't be afraid. Um, what's Anton Ego from? He is the Ratatouille. Uh, yeah, he's a critic from Ratatouille. I think that doesn't sound right. <laughs> I'll go with John Valjean. I I don't know. No. Jean Valjean. That, that is Lestat the Lion Court interview with the vampire. Oh. Tom Cruise. <sighs> Cruise man. Happy. That was huge. I know. Josh. Yeah. This is beautiful. Oh, if I could do this, you wouldn't find me dancing in the street for coins. Uh, Esmeralda. That's correct. Nice. Poor Stevie hasn't gotten a single hunchback. He's too one. smart. Can't pass to uh, him. Stevie. Yeah. You are wrong and always have been wrong. I'm a man, no worse than any man. <sighs> Man, I think we've already done all these. Um, I'll say Phoebus. It's Jean Valjean. Ah, my boy. What's he from? Uh, uh Les Mis. He's. Uh, mm. <sighs> Is that it? 
No, it's one more round, but... What's the score? Mikey. Uh, Mikey, negative seven. Pappy, ten. Josh, eight. Stevie, two. Oh, man, so close. All right, uh, I'll try to get this out before I get the guess. Mikey, this is the day your dreams come true. John luc Picard. <laughs> Incorrect, it's Gaston. That's the one Darn. you read for Gaston? I, I didn't want it to be too easy, but apparently it's you really hard. You couldn't say five dozen eggs? It's too easy. I would not have got either of those quotes, so don't worry about it. Pappy. Yo. It's a long one. That's the, that's the florist laughing. He has crinkly eyes in the bakery window. Lollipops. Smell that? They're giving out melon slices, sugar plum, ice cream. We're passing the I'm passing it to you. Mikey. Okay. That's, that's smart, but... It's e- JLP. It's Amelie. <laughs> Josh, you know him doing that pretty much just sealed the victory, yeah, right? Yeah, it's mathematically over. <laughs> that's how we do it. Exploit Brett's game. I'm not really mad at Brett or Mikey. I'm mad at Stevie for listening to Pappy to throw it to me. You little backstabber. That's from the movie Emily. Brett, that was the easiest quote you read the entire time. Are you, might, are you the only yeah, that's I played that movie, it perfectly. What's that? I've seen it. Oh. Uh, Josh... The Phantom. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and give you a point on that one. Uh, actually, I'll switch it up. Ready? Josh, I'm sorry. It is possible to commit no mistakes and still lose. That is not a weakness. That is life. Are we done? What's going on here? <laughs> If he passes it and gets it, and then Stevie decides he wants to pass it to Josh and Josh gets it, it's a tie. Oh, my God. I'm not that nice. I'll pass it to Pappy. You, you guys, I I got video games to play. <laughs> All right, we're done. Let's, let's, let's wrap this up. It's over. I don't even think. Pass it to Mikey, Josh. It's mathematically over. Pass it to Pappy. All right, it's over. Josh? I wanted to pass it Josh, to Pappy. Josh is... Oh, that's smart. It's over, though. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay. good trivia. Well, what, Cream what, rises to the top. What was my last uh, question, Brett? <laughs> well, it was going to be uh, the one I just said for Josh, but I blew that one. I was hoping he'd pass to Mikey because it's Sean Luke Picard. <laughs> Backstabber. <laughs> Uh, Didn't Josh win? Been... No, Pappy won. Oh, cool. Sorry, everybody. My trip. I'll just do yes or no next time. 50-50. Thank you. <laughs> that was spoilers.